I've really wanted to do a Rhyhorn playthrough for a really long time. Like, since about March, I think, I've been thinking about this guy. Like, most ground rock types haven't fared well so far, and I'm curious how this one's gonna do. If we check out its base stats, it has 80 HP, 85 attack, 95 defense, so those stats are pretty good, but 30 special and 25 speed? Yeah, these two are really not good. And this low of a speed stat gives it a 4.69% chance to get a critical hit. And uh, despite the numerology there, that isn't very nice. So this Pokemon that takes four times damage from water and grass attacks also has a terrible special stat and moves very slowly. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, sure this playthrough is going to be really, really, really easy. <laughs> Also complicating the matter is Rhyhorn's move pool, which is not diverse. Like, it only learns normal type moves through level up. It starts with horn attack, and then learns stomp at level 30. On a surface level, this looks like a really weird interaction because isn't stomp just a worse version of horn attack, like it has 5 less PP? Well, stomp can cause the target to flinch, so I guess that's good if you move first, but uh, Rhyhorn really won't be moving first. Then after that, it learns Tail Whip, Fury Attack, Horn Drill, Leer, and Takedown. So yeah, it gets Tail Whip and Leer. Wonderful. And it also has Horn Drill, which can only hit the opponent if you move first again. So yeah, this move pool is just terrible. Like, I don't know what they were thinking when they designed it. At least through TMs and HMs, it actually gets some moves that will be useful today. It gets Body Slam, which is a fantastic normal type move. It gets Thunderbolt, but probably won't be using it because of its special stat. And then it gets Earthquake and Dig, which are both base 100 power moves in Generation 1. Also, this rock type gets Rock Slide, which is just fantastic. So as I defeat the rival in the lab, you'll notice something else about Rhyhorn. It doesn't level up. The reason is that Rhyhorn has a slow growth rate. Yes, its speed is slow, and also its growth rate is slow, and I expect that its real-time completing this game is also going to be very slow. But I've probably spent long enough now talking about Rhyhorn's disadvantages, so what are some of its advantages? Well, first of all, the rock type is outstanding in the early game, and Horn Attack is a base 65 power move. So it's hitting pretty hard right away. Still, Brock is the first gym leader, so I'm gonna need to prepare for him. To do that, I'm gonna knock out every wild encounter that I run into for extra experience. I also spend some extra time training on Route 1 to level up to level 7 before I head into Viridian City, make a quick stop at the Mart, and then I decide to head on to Route 22. The reason I'm going here is to fight the optional rival. This is going to be extra experience in the early game, giving Rhyhorn the levels it needs to defeat Brock. Also, it means that he's going to choose Jolteon as his final evolution for Eevee. Like, obviously Jolteon isn't going to be very good against Rhyhorn, but I think the champion's team overall is going to be very challenging, just because he'll still have Cloyster on his team. So really, I'm just fighting the rival in this location so I can get the extra experience for Brock. In Viridian Forest, I'm also going to face every optional trainer. I start this by facing the last to the left of the door. Rhyhorn actually runs out of PP for Horn Attack here, so I have to backtrack to Viridian City to heal up before I continue my training. The rest of it goes smoothly, and I reach Pewter City at level 11. After healing to replenish my depleted PP, I head over to Brock's gym, and here I face the junior trainer. He leads with Diglett, it has very low HP, so I knock it out in two turns, and next is Santru, which I take care of in three hits. Okay, so Rhyhorn's level 12. Will this be enough to defeat Brock? Let's find out. He leads with Geodude. I go for Horn Attack, and it does a surprising amount of damage. I would say that's about three damage. However, what I'm really relying on here is the fact that Rhyhorn has a massive defense stat, and it's the Rock type. Since all of Brock's moves are normal moves, he can only deal one damage to me per turn. Because of that, I'm able to knock the Geodude out, and move on to the Onyx with green health left. He only actually dealt seven damage to me in total. But the Onyx is a different story. Because I don't have any moves that don't deal damage, if he uses Bide, I'm gonna have to attack into it. And as a result, it could pay back a lot of damage. Also, Bind can hit me for multiple turns, and as a result, it can do more than one damage per turn as well. Complicating the matter even more, Screech can lower my defense, and allow Tackle to deal more than one damage per turn as well. At the beginning of this fight, it looked like Rhyhorn was taking a lead, but then Onyx unleashes energy from Abide, and that takes me to orange health, and now I'm slightly behind. Onyx unleashes energy again, taking Rhyhorn all the way down to red health, it only has 8 hit points left, and then I run out of PP for Horn Attack. Because of that, I now have to struggle, 
meaning I'm also dealing damage to myself every turn while Onyx deals damage to me. As a result, Rhyhorn just doesn't quite have what it needs to defeat Brock this time. Okay, so I attempted Brock at level 12. I thought that there was a possibility there. In this case, I'll level up to level 13 because that's over a damage rounding threshold, so Rhyhorn will be doing more damage to him then. By the way, I always train in the forest rather than in the patch of grass just south of the Pokemon Center, and while this does take more walking time, it is faster. That's because in Viridian Forest, the Pokemon are on average higher levels. At level 13, I head back to the gym. Now, let's see if Rhyhorn can take Brock out. And in this case, I actually get some luck, because Rhyhorn scores a very unlikely critical hit against the Geodude, which speeds up my process. I actually make it to the Onyx, only having sustained 4 damage. Now it looks like I'm dealing a little bit more with each horn attack. However, this is a double-edged sword, because now Onyx's bides will deal more damage to me. Still, even with two early bides, Rhyhorn is able to just barely edge the snake out and take the victory. I clock in with a time of 10 minutes and 3 seconds for my Brock split, which is quite good, especially when you only have a normal type move. But from here, let's just take a moment and reflect on what we're up against next. Coming up next is Misty, and this is gonna be so challenging. And just in case you don't understand why, let me break it down for you. Misty's Staryu has 38 speed, and her Starmie has 56 speed. Rhyhorn, after defeating Brock at level 13, has 16 speed. 16 speed. So, I don't know if it's going to be possible to even outspeed the Staryu at a reasonable level. Like, yeah, if Rhyhorn was level 50, it would probably move first, but that's very unrealistic. Also, Misty has good AI, which means she's only going to spam water-type moves. As a result, Rhyhorn is going to enter the battle and immediately be hit by a water gun from the Staryu. Then, I'll be able to defeat the Staryu, I think I'll take it out on my first hit, but the Starmie is just going to come out next, and then either hit with water gun or bubble beam, and I'm pretty sure that's going to finish Rhyhorn off. So I either need to be able to survive two hits from Misty's water types, which seems unrealistic, or I need to outspeed the Staryu so that I can knock it out in one hit, survive one maybe water gun from the Starmie, and then knock it out in one hit. So all of my play up until Misty is going to have to synergize to make this happen for Rhyhorn. The best way right now to get the maximum possible speed is just knock out everything in my way. I'm going to fight every trainer between here and Cerulean City. Because you can't backtrack into Mount Moon after you arrive in Cerulean City, I want to make sure that I get through this portion of the game with the maximum possible experience. Today a part of this plan in Mount Moon is picking up the escape rope, then when I run out of PP on Horn Attack, I can just use this to escape back to the Pokemon Center outside of Mount Moon and heal up. This eliminates a little bit of walking time that would have been wasted otherwise. I head back into the cave, defeat the Super Nerd, pick up the Dome Fossil, which is always the correct choice, and then I fight Jesse and James. I take out the Ekans in two hits, the Meowth goes down to a single Horn Attack, and then the Coughing goes down over two hits as well. So, I've made it out of Mount Moon at level 21, and Rhyhorn has 26 speed. So I'm going to need at least 12 more to speed tie the Staryu, and 13 to move first. So, I think now it's becoming obvious that Rhyhorn is going to need at least level 30 to defeat Misty. This is uh, giving me flashbacks to my days playing Onyx. That playthrough was really not fun. By the way, on that video, a lot of you left comments suggesting that I should use Bide with Onyx, and that's a great strategy because Onyx doesn't have problems outspeeding Misty's Pokemon. After all, it's a very fast snake, which is so strange, it just lacks attack. But I think the speed liability is much worse in this case. Obviously, there's no choice in Cerulean City today, it's time to face the rival on Nugget Bridge. He leads with Spearow. It outspeeds, because of course it does, it goes for Peck doing 2 damage, and then I use Horn Attack, which doesn't quite knock it out. Okay, that's unfortunate. Luckily it doesn't go for Growl, and I knock it out on the next turn. Okay, time for the Sandshrew. Now this thing could really mess me up, because it could use Sand Attack. Horn Attack does more than half, Sandshrew grows for Scratch, and because of that, I've knocked it out with my Accuracy intact. And because his following two Pokemon are both normal types, which only have normal moves at this point, I knock them both out with ease, and Rhyhorn's off to Steamroll Nugget Bridge. Well, I hope it's going to Steamroll Nugget Bridge, because there are a few threats here. The first one is this lass. She has a Pidgey, and it knows Sand Attack. It's typically the case that I can't one-shot it. It goes for Quick Attack, I hit with Horn Attack, 
and it doesn't quite knock it out, but ironically here, Rhyhorn is outspeeding, so when it doesn't use Quick Attack, I move first and knock it out on the second turn. Okay, so that was the first challenge, her Nidoran isn't an issue, I knock it out, and then I move on to the trainer who has Mankey. I want to play really safe today, so I save before him. After all, this fighting type knows Low Kick. Now in Generation 1, Low Kick has base 50 power, and it has a chance to flinch. Mankey moves first, hits low kick, and it does a decent amount, but Rhyhorn gets lucky on the next turn, gets a critical hit, and knocks it out in one turn. Okay, so from there, things on Nugget Bridge are much easier. I continue facing most of the trainers along the route, however, I am going to skip the hikers, because they have rock types that are just going to take way too long to defeat. I get through the last youngster, and Rhyhorn just levels up to level 24, and this takes its speed up to 29! Ah, oh, it's going to take so long to move first against the star you. However, there is still another challenge before that, because this lass has an Oddish with Absorb. This is the first Pokemon in the game that I have to fight that can do four times damage to Rhyhorn. Yes, earlier on there was a lass in Mount Moon that I skipped. Uh, she has a Bellsprout and Oddish, yeah, it just didn't make sense to fight her. Also, Rhyhorn only has two PP left. I really didn't want to go back to the Pokemon Center, so please, Horn Attack, get the one hit. And it does. Pidgey's next, I want hit it with Horn Attack, and now I have to use Struggle for the last Oddish. It hits, doesn't get the one hit, Oddish goes for Absorb, which does a lot, however, it doesn't heal it enough, and I knock it out on the next turn. I pick up the Aether, save Bill from his freaky experiment, and then I head back towards Cerulean City. And then, of course, I am going to skip Misty and head straight to the SSN. Because along the way, after I defeat this rocket, I get TM28, which is the TM for Dig. Finally, after 24 minutes of real-time playing, Rhyhorn is ready to learn its second move. And Dig in Generation 1 is fantastic, because this move has 100 base power. It's basically a two-turn earthquake. Before the SSN, I have to defeat this junior trainer. Let's call her Sandy, because she has sand attacking Pidgeys. I get a lucky critical hit on the first one, knocking it out with horn attack. So it looks like I've got guaranteed one hits here. Okay, that's good. Ah, uh, I guess not. The third Pidgey survives on a sliver. Ah, uh, at least I knock it out on the next turn. After I defeat her, I defeat the next mandatory trainer, and then I head into Vermilion City. Here, I make a stop at the Pokemart, where I pick up three repels. And then I do something which I very, very rarely do. I head to the Pokemon Center, and I heal. The reason I usually don't do this is because I want to be able to use Diglett's Tunnel to dig back to Cerulean City after defeating Surge or completing the SSN. But in this case, I'm going to spend a lot of time training in this region, and I want my dig point to be set to this Pokemon Center. I head out past Diglett's Cave, and I defeat most of the trainers here. Until I get to this guy... He has a Poliwag, so I was like, well, let's fight him, I need the experience, but I'm going to save first just to be safe. Poliwag's first, Rhyhorn has 32 speed, so it doesn't move first. Poliwag uses Hypnosis, putting Rhyhorn to sleep right away, then hits with Bubble, getting a critical hit. It lowers Rhyhorn's already atrocious speed. <laughs> This fight just feels like insult to injury. It lowers my speed again on the second turn, and uh, yeah, then two more bubbles just knock Rhyhorn out, so that's my second reset. Oh, that fight was terrible. So yeah, following my nickname for Rhyhorn, I'm just going to nope out of that fight. Instead, I head into Diglett's Tunnel, and this area is going to be key for Rhyhorn. Because I can knock the Diglett out here and gain a lot of stat experience for my speed stat. So I think I should explain stat experience. In Generation 1, there are no effort values or EVs, instead there's a system called stat experience. When you knock the opposing Pokemon out, its base stats are added to your Pokemon's stat experience. So in this case, whenever I knock a Diglett out, I get a lot of speed stat experience, and I get very little HP stat experience but speed is what I need right now. After I run out of PP, I can use Dig, go back to the Pokemon Center, heal up, and then I head on to the SSN. Here, I prioritize getting the TM for Body Slam. After I have it, I can head to the other section of the ship and defeat the guy and obtain the TM for Rest. I don't think this is going to be useful today, but I want it just in case. After all, Rhyhorn has decent defense, so if I'm fighting a Pokemon that does physical damage, I could heal up. However, it's really unfortunate that most of the uh, Champions team are all special attackers, so yeah. Another disadvantage for this cute rock rhino. Of course I defeat the gentleman and pick up the rare candy, and then I'm ready to take on the rival. At this point, Rhyhorn's speed is 35, so I only need 4 more points to outspeed Misty's Staryu. We are slowly getting close! Luckily, because Rhyhorn learns Body Slam, the rival's very easy, I one-shot pretty much all of his Pokémon except the Sandshrew, and now I need to make a decision. 
where do I want to continue my training? I can fight trainers on the SSN, but this is a little bit risky because a lot of them have water types. However, this guy here, he's got a Goldeen and Tentacool and like they don't have any water moves, so I'll defeat them, they're pretty easy. After defeating a bunch more trainers in the SSN, I grab the HM for cut, Rhyhorn has 38 speed, and then I head into Diglett's Tunnel to get one more level. Finally, at almost 36 minutes of playtime, Rhyhorn levels up to level 32, and now it has 39 speed. I can move first against Misty Staryu. I dig out of the cave, backtrack to Cerulean City, and now I'm ready to face the Water Master. So I'm massively overleveled and I have the same type attack bonus with Dig. I am going to one-shot the Staryu, that is for sure. I take it out, and I move on to the Star Me. Now I hope all of you realize that this is completely unrealistic to move first against this thing, so it's going to have its chance to use Bubble Beam. But in this case, it uses Water Gun, and look at how much damage it does. Oh, that's because it got a critical hit. Rhyhorn hangs on on 11 hit points, goes underground using Dig, and strikes back. Please do enough damage. And in this case, it does. Because Rhyhorn got a critical hit itself. That's so lucky. I don't know if I needed it, but I'm happy either way. So yeah, finally Rhyhorn is ready to face the rest of the game. And uh, what could possibly go wrong, right? Luckily for my ground type, the next gym leader that I can face is Surge, so I backtrack to Vermilion City to take care of that right now. But before I face him, I'm going to polish off all the trainers in his gym, which is something I very rarely do. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, why are you continuing to train? Well, believe me, I think that Rhyhorn is going to need all of the training it can get to get through the league. After all, if speed was a problem against Misty, just think about Lorelei and Agatha. You might be like, why Agatha? Well, her first Gengar in yellow version has Mega Drain, so yeah, that's bad. But those two aren't even the least of my concerns. You might think, well, yeah, the champion is obviously going to be hard. He's usually hard. No, 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 no. Lance is Gyarados. It has Hydro Pump and 108 speed. So yeah, I'm going to need to move first against it. Plus, the electric types here give good stat experience for speed. So now with them out of the way, let's face Surge. He only has a Raichu, and uh, obviously it's going to move first, but it's not going to be able to do anything to Rhyhorn. It only has electric and normal type moves. It also just misses in this case, and then I knock it out with a single dig. So this was Rhyhorn's first easy gym leader. I head back to Cerulean City, and now the, uh, the easy times are over for Rhyhorn, because now I have to face the Wrapping Lass. Luckily, all of her Pokemon are so underleveled now that I'm going to outspeed all of them, and I'm pretty sure that I'm going to one-hit, just to really make sure. I go for Dig against the first Oddish, because if I get paralyzed, I do not want to be wrapped to death by the Bellsprout. That would be like the ultimate embarrassment in this playthrough. I take an easy victory, and then I head into Rock Tunnel. Now as a kid, I thought that Pokemon like Rhyhorn, Onyx, Geodude were all just terrible. Like I genuinely thought they were awful Pokemon. And the reason was because pretty much every trainer in the game feels like they're good against them. For example, the Pokemaniac just inside of Rock Tunnel has a Cubone that can do super effective damage to Rhyhorn, and a Slowpoke which has Confusion which isn't super effective, but believe me, it's super effective against Rhyhorn's special stat. Luckily, because I'm so overleveled, I am moving first against these Pokemon with my slow Rhino, so I knock them out with ease. I take care of the next Pokemaniac with a single dig, the status condition junior trainer goes down to two body slams, and now I'm moving on to the self-destructing hiker. Honestly, because I'm a rock type, it would be nice if he just blew up his Pokemon right away against me. The first Geodude goes for defense curl, and then my dig still knocks it out. The second one self-destructs, which is great because I stay underground, and then dig knocks Graveler out in one hit. Okay, so that's good. I'm moving on to the Celadon portion of the game. It only makes sense to do the Rocket Hideout with Rhyhorn. The extra vitamins, the extra money, and the extra rare candy are going to be very key. All the extra trainers that I've battled up until this point, as well as all the resources from the hideout, gives Rhyhorn enough money to buy six vitamins. You can also see in the bottom left that it also can't receive very many vitamins, just because of how much stat experience it's earned to this point. Today I went for a weird spread of vitamins, one protein, two calcium, and three iron. Honestly, my speed is sort of beyond help, and I'm going to have to overlevel so much anyways, that I don't think buying Carbos is going to be worth it. Maybe I'll pay for that, we will see. 
The reason I went for such a weird spread as well is that I want to be able to pick up the vitamins that occur naturally in the overworld throughout the rest of the playthrough. With that out of the way, I pick up the HM for Fly, and then I use it to head to Lavender Town to take on Pokemon Tower. Now right before I fight the rival, I'm going to use the TM that I picked up in the department store for Rock Slide, because this is a great move for Rhyhorn to learn. After all, I am a rock type, so I do get stabbed with it. I teach it in the place of Horn Attack, and then I go up against the rival. He leads with Fero, and obviously Rock Slide is perfect here, it takes it out in a single hit. Next is Shelter, I go for Dig, and it one hits. Next is Vulpix, Body Slam one hits. Dig one hits the Sand True, and Dig one hits the Eevee, so in this fight, Rhyhorn feels pretty dominant. Now I could try and squeeze through the rest of the game and see where my next challenge is, but this is very short-sighted. Once again, Lance's Gyarados is coming up eventually, and I need to move first against it. Also, I just have no idea what I'm going to do against the champion, like the Sand Slash has Earthquake, which is super effective. Then there's an Alakazam, which I have no hope of outspeeding. If I get through all of that, I'm going to get hit by the Executor's Leech Seed, like it's just going to be a gauntlet. So, I'm going to take the time today to defeat all the trainers in Pokemon Tower. After all, this is experience, money, and some good growth for my speed stat. At the top of the tower, I make quick work of Jesse and James, and then instead of heading down Cycling Road to the Safari Zone, I go to Saffron City. Now I'm doing this specifically so I can get the TM for Earthquake as fast as possible. After all, I'm wasting time in battle using Dig, which takes two turns, when I can just use Earthquake, which takes one. Now there are some glitches and stuff around Dig and how it interacts with Paralysis in Generation 1 that might make it the better move, but overall in terms of speed, Earthquake is going to be the better move. After I collect all the vitamins I need from Sylph, I head back to Vermilion City because I actually forgot to pick up the bike voucher. Whoops. This is because I had to reorder my Vermilion City in such a weird order, like I'm never healing there and digging from the tunnel back to the Pokemon Center, so as a result I got a bit mixed up and missed the bike voucher. Oh well, I've got it now. With that, I head out onto Cycling Road, teach Rhyhorn Earthquake, and then I defeat all the trainers here. Now this might seem like I'm really overleveling, especially because I have a rock move which is super effective against Koga's bug Pokemon, but look at my speed. The third Venonat has 55 speed. I am going to need to move first against it so that it doesn't just spam Sleep Powder and put Rhyhorn to sleep and then hit me with Psychic. After all, my special is only 55. It's going to do a lot of damage. Outside of Cycling Road, I fight the three Bird Keepers by this little patch of grass, and then I head over to the Safari Zone, and I magically cut some trees with the power of video editing. In the Safari Zone, I'm going to pick up the three standard items that I grab, which is the Carbos, the Full Restore, and the Protein. On my way to the last one of these, I actually ran into a Pinsir, which is the first time I've seen one of these in any of my challenges. I tried to catch it with a Safari Ball, but didn't work out for me today. It just ran away, which is uh, what always happened when I was a kid. Ah, uh, I really wanted a pincer, it's so cool, but I never got one. At the end of the Safari Zone, I pick up the mandatory items, and then I dig back to Celadon City. So now I'm going to make a tough choice, which is to go to Erica's gym. After all, her Pokemon are actually quite slow. The maximum speed on her team is 45, and as a result, I think Rhyhorn is actually going to have an easy time here. Plus, there are a lot of trainers in her gym, which all have weak Pokemon now that I'm level 43, so I can defeat all of them easily, and then make it to Erika. Okay, let's see if Rhyhorn can do this. She leads with Tangela. I go for Body Slam, it does half. She strikes back with Vine Whip, which does so much to me, taking Rhyhorn down to red health, and then I knock it out. Weepin' Bell's next, I'm gonna outspeed, I move first with Earthquake, and it goes down in one hit. Okay, so I've got this. Gloom is last, I go for Earthquake again, and it goes down. Even being massively overleveled there, I could have lost if the Tangela had gone for Mega Drain and got a critical hit. So, I guess Rhyhorn needed a little bit of luck, even at level 43. Next, I head to Sylph because I want to do more leveling up, so I fight a lot of the rockets throughout this portion of the game. After that training, Rhyhorn's level 45, so now I think it makes sense to try the rival here to see if I can get by him. First is Sandslash. It goes for Swift, doing a little bit to me, and then I use Earthquake, which takes it to Orange. It strikes back with Slash, getting a critical hit, of course, which does very little, and then I knock it out. Okay, time for Ninetales. It goes for Roar, which does nothing in battle, I knock it out with Earthquake, and now it's time for the Cloister. Okay, so maybe I miscalculated here, I should probably have 63 speed to move first against this thing. Oh well, I guess I'll just pray that it doesn't use Clamp. It goes for Withdraw, I hit with Rock Slide, it does more than half, okay. That's good. Cloister uses Withdraw again, I hit with Rock Slide, and that finishes it off. Okay, that was lucky. Next is Kadabra. It goes for Psybeam, doing a little bit, and then I knock it out with Earthquake. Last is Jolteon. 
Now it does have double kick, but my defense stat is so high that it does very little, and then I take it down with Earthquake. All right, so I made it through the rival. That's feeling good. All of this extra training is really making Rhyhorn feel like a tank at this point in the game. I finish off Jesse James and Giovanni, and then I dig out of Sylph, heading towards Koga's gym next. I take my time in here battling four of the trainers. This does require one trip back to the Pokemon Center, but after that, I'm ready to face Koga. Rhyhorn has enough speed now that it's going to move first against the Venonats, so I hope that that's going to allow me to get to the Venomoth without taking any damage. In this case, because Earthquake and Rock Slide both get the same type attack bonus, Rock Slide is the better choice here against these bug types. It knocks the first Venonat out in one hit, the second Venonat out in one hit, okay, I should get the third one, and yep, it goes down as well. All that remains is his Venomoth. I go for Rock Slide, it hits the Fighting Steel Moth, but in this case, it's enough. Okay, Rhyhorn, I guess all of my planning is really paying off for this thing. I only have two resets so far, and when I first set out to do this challenge, I thought that it was going to be much bumpier than this. I pick up the rare candy in the Warden's house, fly to Pallet Town, and then I surf to Cinnabar Island. In Blaine's gym, I fight all of the trainers, and this takes Rhyhorn up to level 50. Now, I just want to bring everyone's attention to the fact that I'm only level 50. Yes, I'm only level 50. If I was using a different Pokemon here, I'm sure that it would be at a much higher level. The slow growth rate is just awful. And you know who else is going to be awful? Well, uh, Blaine is going to be awful. His fire types have fire and normal moves, both of which Rhyhorn resists, and Earthquake is super effective. So yeah, this is a series of one hits, a really easy badge for Rhyhorn to earn. And with it, I now have all my badge boosts. I head back to Saffron City, pick up the TM for Mimic, and now I have to go up against Sabrina. I have no hope of outspeeding any of her Pokemon, so really this one is just going to be luck. And things start off well for me because Sabrina uses an X Defend on the Abra, which is really not enough to save this small, frail, psychic type from my stampeding Rhino's Earthquake. Kadabra's next, it goes for Kinesis, lowering Rhyhorn's accuracy, and then I miss Earthquake. Okay, that's annoying. On the next turn, Sabrina uses an X Defend, my Earthquake hits, and it's still enough to get the KO. Okay, all that's left is Alakazam, I can do this, I know it. Sabrina uses an X Defend first turn, my Earthquake hits, and the psychic type survives but it just uses Reflect, and then my next Earthquake knocks it out. Okay, Rhyhorn, well done. We've made it all the way to Giovanni. And this is where things start to get hard. As a Rock-type, Rhyhorn is weak to ground, and Giovanni's team is incredibly terrifying in Yellow version. In his gym, I fight one additional trainer just to level Rhyhorn up to level 52, and with that, I've done everything that I could to prepare. Let's see how a first attempt goes against him. Dugtrio's first, and I have no hope of outspeeding it. I have actually no hope of outspeeding any of the Pokemon on his team except his Rhydon. Dugtrio uses Dig, and I used Earthquake, but in Generation 1, Earthquake doesn't hit Pokemon when they're underground, so I just get hit by Dig, and it takes Rhyhorn all the way down to red health. Okay, because of a critical hit. My next Earthquake connects with Dugtrio and knocks it out. Alright, at least I get to move on to the Persian, but this fight is pretty much over. I knock it out, but then the Nidoqueen has a super effective double kick which finishes Rhyhorn off. I try it again, this time Fissure just KOs Rhyhorn right away. And then in the third fight, I get the best possible luck. Giovanni's Dugtrio uses Earthquake, which does just under half to Rhyhorn without a critical hit, and then my Earthquake knocks it out. Okay, so I have green health for the Persian this time. Giovanni uses a guard spec, I knock it out after it uses a single double team, and so I've made it to the Nidoqueen in the best possible situation. It goes for Earthquake, Rhyhorn survives, but then my Earthquake doesn't knock the Poison type out. As a result, the Nidoqueen's double kick finishes me for a second time. So it's time for more levels, and yes, I am still sitting on all 10 rare candies that I collected throughout the playthrough. No, I do not really want to use them right now. If you've seen my Aerodactyl, Onyx, Cubone, or Diglett videos, you know that Lorelei is going to be very challenging, and I'm going to need the maximum possible level for that battle. So after clearing out the trainers in Giovanni's gym, Rhyhorn's now level 53, which is one level higher, but that is over a damage rounding threshold, so I'll be doing significantly more with each hit. In the next battle, I make it through the Persian with green health, but unfortunately it used Screech, lowering my defense stat, which in this case is a death sentence, because Nidoqueen moves first, hits with Earthquake, and knocks Rhyhorn out. Okay, so I've put it off long enough. 
I think what I need to do here is teach Rhyhorn Mimic in the place of Dig and use it to steal Persian's double team. Unfortunately though, Giovanni wants none of that. Dugtrio uses Fissure and Rhyhorn goes down again. He tries for it a second time, but that's pushing his luck. It misses and then I finish the Dugtrio off with Earthquake. Okay, now I can mimic double team. Normally for a lot of Pokemon, this strategy entails some level of risk because while you try to set up, the Persian can hit you with Slash for massive damage. But since I'm a rock type with a great defense stat, it can't do very much to me as I set up. Each time the move gets triggered, my stats get boosted, and as a result, when I finally attack the Persian, it goes down to a single hit. Nido Queen falls, Nido King falls, and all that Giovanni has left is Ride On. I go for Earthquake, it hits, and Giovanni's ace falls. So Rhyhorn's done it, it's beat the gym challenge, and now all that are left are six trainers. And among them are the five strongest opponents in the game. The first one that I have to face is the rival on Route 22. Now I'm not particularly worried about his team today. His Sandslash doesn't know Earthquake yet, so I can knock it out safely in two turns. Executes next. It resists Earthquake, so Rock Slide's the best move here. And I knock it out in one hit with a lucky crit. Nice. Ninetales goes down to an Earthquake, and that leads to what might be his scariest Pokemon. Cloister. Here's a cute fact. I have 79 speed, it has 78 speed. I did not plan that, but that's very nice because now I move first, hit Rock Slide, taking Cloister to orange, it goes for withdraw, but that's fine because then I can knock it out on the next turn. Oh no, Rock Slide misses. Of course it misses. Cloister goes for Clamp, and look at how much damage Clamp does. Oh, that was a critical hit. So, a single hit from Clamp took Rhyhorn out when it got a crit. That's equivalent to roughly two hits from Clamp. So in this case, I think I should be scared of the Cloister. There is no way Rhyhorn is going to survive three or more hits from it. And the worst part about it is that this is the weakest Cloister I have yet to face. I have to fight Lorelei's and then the champions again in the final fight. However, I should be able to get two hits on this Cloister because it could choose to use Withdraw or in this case Aurora Beam, which gives me the win. After that, I only have to get through the Kadabra and the Jolteon, but uh, the Cadaver has something to say about that today because it uses Psychic and knocks Rhyhorn out. By the way, in the next fight, the Execute survives Rock Slide because it's not getting one hit unless I get a critical hit. And then it uses Stun Spore on Rhyhorn, which is actually a problem because of my speed in this fight. I would really like to move first against the Cloister. But as a result, I don't. It uses Clamp, and it takes me to one hit point with two hits. Strangely, that's all it has in it. It stops, it uses Withdraw, I actually get a Rock Slide in, and then it knocks me out with a Roar Beam. Okay. So all of the training that I did in the playthrough to prepare for these kind of tough opponents has not been enough. I am going to go and continue grinding. I do this on Route 15. There are so many trainers here that are all clustered really close together. After getting level 55 over the next damage rounding threshold, I head back to the rival. Let's try this again. This obviously isn't enough to one-shot either the Sand Slash or the Execute. In this case, I get paralyzed. I don't move, and then it uses Solar Beam, and it one-hits Rhyhorn. Oh no. And then in the next fight, I miss not one, but two Rock Slides on Execute, and it KOs me again with Solar Beam. Okay, I'm going to try this fight one more time. If I don't get it, I am going to go and train. Remember, Lance's Gyarados has 108 speed, and I want to move first against it. My speed is 82 right now, so even with 11 rare candies, I'm going to be like, still probably too slow. So this is definitely not the moment to use my rare candies. At least this time I got by the Execute and I make it to the Cloister again. Okay Rock Slide, please do this. It hits, taking the Cloister to red, and then Clamp misses. And with that, I've made it to the Kadabra at green health. It goes for Psybeam, doing a little bit, and I finish it with Earthquake. All that's left is Jolteon, it doesn't have Double Kick anymore, so it hits a Pin Missile, which I just shrug off, and then I knock it out with Earthquake. Finally, Rhyhorn has done it, and it's headed off towards the League. I decided to fight some extra trainers in Victory Road, and there's this cool trainer who has a Parasect, a Dugong, and a Chansey. I figured since there's a Chansey on her team, it'll be good experience, so I might as well fight her. But then the Parasect paralyzes me, and I like can't move first, so the Dugong hits me with Aurora Beam, which takes Rhyhorn all the way down to red health. Luckily, I knock it out, and all that's left is Chansey. Remember, this thing has base 5 attack and defense. Look at its stats on the right-hand side of the screen. 17 attack, 16 defense. <laughs> so yeah, I should be fine here. Its double slaps are only doing 1 damage, and I knock it out with a single rock slide, so I'm lucky I won that one. So Rhyhorn's making it to Indigo Plateau, and it's around an hour and 30 minutes of real time spent in this playthrough so far. I'm just under level 57, so it makes sense to grab some experience for that. 
Then if I use all 11 rare candies, I would be at level 68. That's a 12 level increase from where I am right now. And if each level gives one speed, I am not going to be anywhere near the speed I need for Lance's Gyarados. So maybe I'll have to do the less desirable way of defeating it, which uh, we'll see very soon, I think. Still, to just be slightly conservative, I actually head to the power plant. Here I can pick up an additional rare candy, and then for good measure I actually knock out Zapdos, like, might as well. It's also worth noting now that I went to the power plant, I have 12 rare candies. So if I go to Victory Road and level up to level 58, then Rhyhorn can be level 70 when it starts the league. So how will it do? Let's find out. Well, uh, false start because I forgot to use my rare candies against Lorelei. She goes for Bubble Beam with Dugong, and uh, yeah, it just one hits. Granted, my Rhyhorn only needs 4 speed before it moves first here. So, at level 70, I should be able to do this. I go for Rock Slide, it hits Dugong, and knocks it out in one hit. Okay, encouraging. But the Cloister's probably gonna survive. Well, it's really gonna survive if I miss. It hits an Ice Beam, doing about half. My next Rock Slide hits, and it doesn't get the KO. Cloister survives with a Sliver. Lorelei uses a Super Potion, and then I knock it out with Rock Slide. Okay, time for the Slowbro. Now I decided to use Mimic to steal Amnesia so that I can set up my special stat. I figured that this way if I didn't one hit the Lapras, I would be able to survive one of its hits. However, Slowbro hits me with a Surf on the way, taking Rhyhorn to red, and now I'm not really liking that plan. Okay, time to knock this thing out. I get a lucky crit with Earthquake taking it down. Jinx is next, Earthquake one hits, and now it's time for Lorelei's Ace. I go for Rock Slide, it hits, and gets the KO. Whew, okay, so that was a win. Uh, I think that the strategy with Amnesia was definitely a misplay. I'm glad I got through it and I can have this little rest stop on the next trainer first. Granted, he has some fighting types which could kind of be scary. Like the Hitmonlee is actually going to move first and it could use High Jump Kick. But in this case, it chooses Mega Kick, which if you don't know, is a normal type move. So I knock it out, I knock the Onyx out, last is Machamp, I go for Earthquake, it takes it to red, and then this thing actually uses Submission. But yeah, Rhyhorn's defense stat has something to say about that. So I've made it to Agatha. Now because I have Earthquake, I'm really not that worried about her, although she has a really big brain play here where she sends out Gengar first, I go for Earthquake, then she switches into Golbat so I don't hit it, and then Golbat uses Supersonic on Rhyhorn, like, ugh, awful. At least my Rock Slide hits and knocks it out. Gengar's next. I go for Earthquake right away because I want to knock this thing out quickly so that it doesn't use Mega Drain. It's behind a substitute, so I have to break that first. It makes another one, which is really annoying. Luckily, its third move choice is just Confuse Ray, but I'm already confused, so it does nothing and I knock it out. Haunter's next. It goes for Lick, doesn't paralyze me, and I take it down. Obviously, Arbok isn't a threat. The only thing it could do to me is paralyze me, which could be annoying, but it doesn't, and I knock it out. Last is Gengar. It goes for Hypnosis right away, putting Rhyhorn to sleep. Okay, please wake up. While I'm snoozing, Gengar hits a massive Psychic, taking Rhyhorn to orange health. But then I wake up, I'm still confused, but I still move through it, hit Earthquake, and knock Agatha's final Gengar out. I've arrived at Lance, and I have some bad news. Rhyhorn has 105 speed. It needed four more speed. I think if I had actually bought Carbos, I might be moving first against Lance. I'm really regretting those wonky vitamins in the department store. But there is a strategy, and while it makes my skin crawl, I think it's the only option. I have to fight Lance until he misses a Hydro Pump. Yes, I could just black out and try all of this again, but I have the feeling that Lorelei and Agatha have the potential to slow me down more than they did the first time around. So let's see how many resets it takes to get the 20% chance for Hydro Pump to miss. That's two. That's three, that's four, that's five, that's six, that's seven, that's eight, that's nine, and this is starting to feel like my Gyarados playthrough now. Okay, finally on my 10th attempt, the Gyarados misses Hydro Pump and I get a Rock Slide in. Now, please KO, it does. Okay, I should be able to take the Dragonairs out with Earthquake. The first one goes down, and so does the second one. Aerodactyl's next, it doesn't resist Rock Slide, so I knock it out in one turn, and now only Dragonite remains. It moves first with Blizzard, which does more than half to Rhyhorn, and now I have to get the one hit with Rock Slide. And... it gets it. Okay, so Rhyhorn has made it to the champion. And honestly, despite having 22 resets, an hour and 40 is like a decent time. I figured that Rhyhorn would definitely be over the two hour mark when I first embarked on this playthrough. But I shouldn't celebrate yet because it could all fall apart from here. 
After all, we have to get through a cloister. The rival leads with Sand Slash, and this thing is officially scary now because it knows Earthquake. Raihar moves first, hitting its own, but it doesn't do enough to get the KO, so let's see how much we can tank. Okay, it looks like we'll survive at least two Earthquakes, that's really good. I knock the Sand Slash out, and next is Alakazam. I'm not going to move first against this thing no matter what I do. I decided to try for Mimic to steal Recover, but yeah, it just hits a critical hit with Psybeam and takes me down to 8 hit points, like, uh. So now it needs to miss Kinesis or something like that. And that's exactly what happens. My Earthquake hits and Alakazam goes down. I cannot believe that I've made it to the Executor. Because of good AI, it's just gonna spam Leech Seed so I can use this to my advantage, recovering all the way to full health. After that, I strike back with Rock Slide and I knock it out over two turns. Okay, now it's time for the Cloister. I outspeed, Rock Slide takes it to orange health and then it uses Ice Beam. But Rhyhorn survives, doesn't get frozen, and I knock it out. Okay, the Ninetales should be free. Well, it confuses me. That's actually really bad. I knock it out with Earthquake, and last is Jolteon. He goes for Pin Missile, doing very little. I don't hit myself in confusion, and Earthquake takes it out. Rhyhorn clocks in with a time of 1 hour 41 minutes and 14 seconds, with 22 resets at level 72. This took 6 hours and 8 minutes of game time. Now I have to say in summary, I'm kind of surprised by these results. Whitehorn didn't perform nearly as badly as I thought it would. Granted, that might be because I had some foresight and really predicted that Misty was going to be challenging. Plus, my experience is starting to show I didn't actually have to look up the speed of Misty's two Pokemon. I have that memorized now. So I knew going in that I had a metric that I could shoot towards, which was just 39 speed. And once I had that, then I could face her. If I hadn't known that, I think I would have reset there many times. But now let's find out just how much time I can shave off these results by optimizing things for Rhyhorn. The philosophy of my early game is largely unaltered, so I'm mostly just tweaking some small details here. First of all, I go into the rival battle on Route 22 at level 8 instead of level 7. This is for damage rounding. It gives Rhyhorn a slightly better chance in the case that Spiro uses Growl or the case that Eevee uses Sand Attack. After that, I time things out so that when I defeat the junior trainer in Brock's gym, Rhyhorn levels up to level 13 and then I can face Brock immediately. I just want to mention here with the times that I'm going to say the differences, sometimes there's rounding errors because I am recording the millisecond times and uh, Excel and numbers and all the spreadsheet softwares don't really like to round durations particularly well. So if I'm off by one second here or there, it's probably due to a rounding error. Anyways, in this run, I'm able to defeat Brock 39 seconds faster than I was last time, so that's already a nice advantage that I've gained. The next portion of the game I leave largely the same. I arrive at the rival at level 20 so that I'm over damage rounding. This ensures that I have a decent chance of two-shotting the Spiro. It's a 57% chance in this case. Once I make it past it, the rest of the fight's easy. From there, I head to Vermilion City, train against a bunch of Diglets. I also train against a bunch of trainers in the SSN. And then after that, with 38 speed almost leveled up, I head back to Cerulean City, and here I face the one trainer in Misty's gym to level me up, giving me 39 speed for this fight. The exact damage ranges here are pretty simple. Dig has a guaranteed one hit on both of her Pokemon. But I think the damage ranges that are much more interesting are Starmie's damage ranges. So what's the chance that it one hits me with Bubble Beam? Well, it's only got a 22% chance of doing that. In this case, it actually does use Bubble Beam testing this hypothesis, and Rhyhorn hangs on with 19 hit points and knocks the Starfish out. Surge is obviously easy, like I didn't even heal for this fight, gotta save every second that I can. Now, in Celadon City, I want to make a big change, which is my vitamins. This time, I buy 3 Carbos and 3 Calcium. The Carbos are there specifically so that I'll outspeed the Gyarados at the end of the game, and I want the Calcium so that I have better survivability against special attacks. It might seem like I should be buying more Carbos here, but that's not the case. I want to make sure that I can pick up and use the free Carbos that occur later in the playthrough. Now, in the mid-game of this playthrough, I have to do a lot of training like I did last time. So let's talk about the goal levels that I have for Rhydon. For Erika, anything above level 40 is going to be enough to two-shot the Tangela and then one-shot both the Weeping Bell and the Gloom. By the way, her second two team members are much easier to take out with Dig, so I don't actually need to optimize for them. More so, I just need to two-shot the Tangela so it can't knock me out with two successive hits. After that, I fight quite literally every trainer in Sylph for experience. My target level here is level 49. It's sort of a nice mixing point between level 48, which gives outspeeds on the Sandslash and Cloister against the rival, and level 50, which gives a guaranteed one-hit KO on the Cloister with Rock Slide. In this case, my target level is 49. I want this for the rival. 
50 would be better, but it involves some backtracking, and I don't really want to do that right now. At this level, I have a 51% chance to one-hit the Cloister. Today, I don't get it, but he just uses a potion, and then I knock it out anyways. With the rival and all the trainers in Sylph out of the way, now I have to decide where to go next, and I chose to stay here in Saffron City. I can head to the Fighting Dojo, defeat all the trainers there, they give good attack stat experience, and then I go to Saffron Gym. It's basically impossible for Rhyhorn to outspeed Sabrina's Pokemon, so I might as well fight them now, because at level 48, it starts one-hitting the Alakazam with Earthquake. So in this case, I just need to get lucky against her. And today, my Rhyhorn does. It proceeds through the battle without any resets. So next, I'm headed to Fuchsia City because I need the TM for Surf to head to Cinnabar Island. But before I fight Koga, I'm going to fight all the trainers on Route 15. Then in the gym, I fight only the mandatory trainers, and now I'm ready to fight Koga. By the way, this training wasn't specifically for him, because I already have guaranteed one hits with Earthquake on all four of his Pokemon. Because the Venomoth outspeeds, you might wonder if it can one hit me, and it can't. It actually only has a 1.6% chance to two hit with Psychic. So even in the case of a critical hit, I won't lose, because in Generation 1, they don't do two times damage. Blaine's next, and I fight all the trainers in his gym. I was uh, expecting Blaine to be easy experience as well, but Ninetales confuses me, does a lot of damage with Flamethrower. I get through the Rapidash, but then Arcanine uses Flamethrower and Rhyhorn goes down. So that's my first reset of this playthrough. It always seems like Blaine comes out of left field for a lot of Pokemon in yellow version and just gives them resets when the type matchup suggests that they shouldn't lose here. At least I'm able to defeat him on my second attempt. Now, in Viridian Gym, I have to mention a mistake that I made in my rooting software. Much earlier on in the playthrough, I actually checked off the wrong trainer in one of these areas, and as a result, when I defeat the planned trainers in this gym, I don't have quite enough experience to level up to 57, so I end up having to fight one additional trainer as a result. And this level was really important because then I'm going to use 10 rare candies to get Rhyhorn all the way up to level 67. This way, I maximize my defense against Giovanni, and I also set myself up for success in the rest of the playthrough. For the ground-type gym leader, I teach Mimic in the place of Body Slam. This strategy allows me to take an easy first attempt victory against him. And now we're off to the Rhyhorn races. Actually, we're not. It's not Generation 6. This is Generation 1. No Rhyhorn racing in this generation because my speed stat is still terrible. But at least I can make quick work of the rival before the league. So because I'm a higher level now, I one-shot the Execute with Rock Slide consistently. Ninetales goes down to Earthquake, Cloister goes down to a Rock Slide, yes this is a guarantee unless I miss, and then the following Kadabra and Jolteon both fall to Earthquake. Now before I get to the League, I have to do a little bit more training in Victory Road. I fight a total of 6 additional trainers here, and that brings Rhyhorn up to the proper level to fight the League. And then, I have a strategy to unveil which I am very proud of. We are going to use the Amnesia Thunderbolt Rhyhorn. In the previous fight when I mimicked Amnesia, I was just using it defensively, but in this case, I can use it offensively. At level 69, I have a nice damage range against the Dugong, so I can knock it out in one turn with Rock Slide. I can knock the Cloister out with one hit from Thunderbolt, but this time it just barely hangs on. It goes for Clamp, dealing damage, Lorelei heals in between dealing damage, which just doesn't feel fair, and then I knock it out with Thunderbolt. But now I only have orange health for the Slowbro. Here's the thing though, Slowbro is always going to use Withdraw on the second turn, so if I survive the first turn, I will get my setup in, and I only need one Amnesia. The reason is that one Amnesia gives a guaranteed one hit with Thunderbolt on the Slowbro. And by the way, now I'm done with Thunderbolt, because my badge boost allows me to survive Jinx's Ice Punch, and one hit it with Earthquake, and now Rock Slide is a guaranteed one hit because it got a boost. Oh, but in this case I miss, and then Lapras misses Blizzard, and then I use Rock Slide on the next turn and knock it out. Okay, well done Rhyhard. Against Agatha, this fight could be awful. This is just totally a gamble. The most consistent thing to do here is just attack and hope she makes all the wrong choices. And in this case, she does, and Rhyhorn wins. So I've made it to Lance with only one reset, and Rhyhorn is getting a much faster time. After defeating Agatha, it is 12 minutes and 5 seconds ahead of its previous time. However, with Lance, I'm hoping to extend this lead just slightly. I use one additional rare candy which takes Rhyhorn up to level 72 for this fight. And now we have to really ponder something. What is better? Thunderbolt or Rock Slide? You'd think that 4 times damage from an electric move would be better. However, in this case, Rock Slide has a 100% chance to knock the Gyarados out, while Thunderbolt only has a 90.2% chance to knock the Gyarados out. So, yeah, Thunderbolt is still better by a 0.2% because Rock Slide can miss. I roll for the KO, and in this case, I get it. 
After that, both of the Dragonairs are guaranteed one hits, the Aerodactyl is a guaranteed one hit with Rock Slide, and now I need to talk about the Dragonite. Because at level 73, I would get a much better damage range on it. But in the end, I tried to optimize just a little bit more for time, because in this case, I have about a 60% chance to knock it out with Rock Slide. Obviously, I have to survive its Blizzard first, but in this case, it freezes Rhyhorn just great. I only actually lose there if it gets a crit or a freeze, and then my Rock Slide connects and I knock it out. Okay, so it's time for the champion. I don't have a way to one hit the Sand Slash. As a result, it actually gets a critical hit Earthquake and does so much to me on the first turn. Uh, as a result, the Alakazam just goes for Psy Beam and I lose right away. So that's the third reset. In the next battle, I make it past it on green health. Alakazam uses Psy Beam and then I knock it out. Executor's next. And here I am actually going to use Rest because I can heal against it while it sets up Leech Seed. This prevents Rhyhorn from having to mimic recover from the Alakazam. That is just a risky play. I knock the strange coconut thing out with Rock Slide, and then I move on to the Cloister. Here's the thing. Against it, I'm only going to take it out if I get a critical hit. So I'm hoping for three scenarios. A Clamp miss, an Ice Beam, or an Aurora Beam. Unfortunately, in this case, Clamp hits, and yeah, Rhyhorn gets another reset. I really hate to say that it comes down to this, but I couldn't find a way past this thing. Thunderbolt doesn't actually give a meaningful damage improvement over Rock Slide in this case, just because of how unbalanced Rhydon's attack and special attack are. I am lucky though because the Cloister has good AI, so it's going to randomize between those three moves. So essentially, if I arrive at the Cloister with good health, I have a 2 in 3 shot of winning. However, the odds are a little bit better than that because Clamp can miss, which is what happens in this case, and even with low health, I'm able to proceed on and defeat the rival's final two Pokémon. By doing this, Rhyhorn clocks in with a time of 1 hour, 28 minutes, and 54 seconds, with 4 resets at level 73. This took 5 hours and 42 minutes of game time. Okay, so what placement did these results earn Rhyhorn? Well, first of all, I'll just say that I'm recording this video before I recorded Arcanine vs. Ninetales, so that's why they aren't in this tier list. Rhyhorn outperformed all the Pokémon in the E tier, but it did not outperform Seal. But it did outperform Seal in my heart. So today, Rhyhorn earns itself a spot at the top of the E tier. Like, subscribe, bring the Chimeco, and comment, because I gotta read them all. If you support me on Patreon or through YouTube memberships, thank you so much. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. I'll see you next time.